Verses, verse number 8 and verse number 10. Two verses, verse number 8 and verse number 10. 
verse number 8 and verse number 10. Hallelujah. Is there any, anyone happy to be in the church this morning? Thank you. Let's read in the name of the Lord. Among the gods there is none. Can you make a finishing of that portion with me? Like, mm, can I hear your big voice? Mm -mm. Yet, can you say big louder? Amen. Like you are Lord. Let's read it again. Among the gods, there is none. Can you finish it with me? Like you are God. For no are there any work like your works. That's verse number 8. Verse number 10. For you are great and do can you read that portion with me? Do what? Can you say it more loud and you receive that marvelous things for you? Can you say it? Yes, he does wonders things. You alone are God. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. Before I let you sit it, have you been blessed with the rivers of joy ministration this morning? Appreciating them this morning. Thank you for your ministration. God bless you. May have your seats, all of you, in Jesus' name. Follows for living miraculous living. Experience miraculousness of God. Seeing God, he does extraordinary things. Things which are beyond your comprehension. Amazed with what God is performing and is doing for you. Hallelujah. This word, this month, we are focusing on. Focusing on faith and focusing on miracles. And still believing that you are on the schedule of God for your next miracle. That the Lord has a miracle for you. Can somebody who trusts God, believe God for his miracle, say amen in the name of the Lord. Yes, indeed. You are in the schedule of a miracle from God for your life. And the, the, the author of this verse, which we, these verses we just read, is King David himself. He is amazed of what God is able to do. He is amazed of what the Lord is able to do as far as he can see the battles is won, the victories has gained in his life. He is overwhelmed and say, this is what God can do because none is like him. No God is like him. No any work can be compared with the work of God can be compared with what God can do. Let me inspire you this morning. You should be in a place where you can give all credit to God because there are situations that you went through and you can confess personally, individually, and say, would have not been by God, would have not been Him doing this, this would have not happened. When you come to that situation, when you come to that circumstance, when you come to that kind of a season, you are beginning to live in the miraculous of God. Can you say amen? You begin to live in the miraculous of God. There should be some situation you find all your efforts, all your endeavors, all your resources, everything you could use comes to an age, comes to the end, comes to a place you can see that they are beginning to not work. My intellect, my resources like money, everything I have cannot move me from where I am to the level I want to go or to the place I desire to go. When you come to that situation, it's a moment for you to begin lift up your eyes to the Lord. And begin say, here I am. If you are not intercepting in this situation, if you are not stepping up in this situation, I am falling apart. I am failing. I am coming to a shame. Now, God, glorify yourself. Hallelujah. And as 
as God steps into the moments that you are at your age, the end of your strength, the end of your capacities and abilities, that's the place God he takes all the glory for himself. Because you'll be confessing, because you'll be saying, this is not me, this is not what I could do on my own, this is the work of God, because me and all other people would have not been able to do these things I'm seeing before me with my own eyes. Can somebody say amen in the name of the Lord? I pray that you come to that situation. I pray that you experience God personally. We looked to law number one, which you should be living on, is the law of living. While you trust, you believe in the God of miraculous, you leave trusting any time, any time, anything may take place, may happen. God can surprise me. God can do these things which I cannot do them by myself. God can make a surprise for me. You live with that feeling. We live with that understanding. You live with that 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 kind of a concept in your mind that the Lord can make a surprise for me. You have that an idea. You have that idea that God can make a surprise for me. You live expecting a miracle. You live expecting something extraordinary may happen for you. You trust God for an intervention, God's intervention, God stepping up into the situation. You like say, I've come to the end. I've come to the end of all what I could do by myself. I pray that you begin to live with that mindset in the spiritual realm. Can you say amen in the name of the Lord? We also touched Genesis 15. God, he takes Abraham. And takes him out and say, look to these stars outside. This will be a sign for how many children will be having. Your descendants, your offsprings will be as many as these stars you see outside. What was God doing now for Abraham? God was doing uh, something which is imperative for you also to experience in your life. God was giving something which should be going on in the minds of in the mind of Abraham, knowing that whenever I see the stars, it's like I'm seeing what is about to come for me. Even if I don't have a child right now, but the stars are a sign that God is going to do something for me. Can you say amen? God is going to do something for me. That's why the author of the book of Hebrews says, faith is a substance for the things you're hoping for. Something you're hoping for. The stars Abraham sees, it's something he's hoping for. Though there's barrenness in Sarah, though there's old age in himself, he's dying, he's almost in his Age cannot produce a child. But when he goes outside in the night and sees the stars, there's something which arises inside of him. Amen. Something arises inside of him and say, one day shall be having children like those stars you're seeing outside. That's why you come to preachings like this one. So that we, we, we steer you with the word of God. That your dream will one day come to pass. If I have some dreamers, let them say amen in the name of the Lord. Amen. Yes, you might be going a situation which it seems to be you're, you're too far. You're too behind the date, the schedule, the plans. This thing takes many years to get there. But never be intimidated by the seasons and times that we see them chronologically. God is over, is beyond, surpasses the chronological times. He can make it even in one second. The God we preach this morning can make a miracle even in one second for your life. Can make it. This is why Joshua... Moses is, is dead. God tells Joshua that come with me. 
Let me show the boundaries. Let me show you where the land of my people will be reaching far, far reaching. I want you to see an impression of where you'll be reigning, you'll be occupying, you'll be dwelling. I want you to know where I'm taking you. This is the land, the size of the land which I'm giving to you. You must have something you're hoping for somebody. You must have an idea of where you're going. Am I speaking to people with the hopes of something in their lives? And I like what the author of Hebrews says, things hoping for. Not one thing, it's things you're hoping for. You're hoping for a wonderful marriage. You're hoping for a wonderful business. You're hoping for a wonderful ministry. You're hoping for wonderful kids. You're hoping for wonderful ministry. Whatever you're hoping for, he puts them in plural. That you're allowed to have some hopes in you. That one day the Lord will make it to come to pass for your life. You're allowed to dream. You're allowed to begin conceptualizing what is ahead of you. You're allowed to begin feel like you are in that place. I praise God for what God began to do, preparing you and me for our season. We are in the time we need to live by faith. Can somebody say amen in the name of the Lord? Begin to visualize that's hoping for what I'm talking about. Visualizing of what God has for your life. We saw how God was attesting his son Jesus in miracles and in signs. And how God was proving that miracles and signs are imperative also to the children of God even today. God has not stopped doing miracles even today. God is still performing miracles. You might, you might be here this morning and you, you are not having your personal testimony of a miracle of God. I'm saying this morning, you are on the schedule of God. Your season is about to come. Your time is about to arise before you. Get prepared for what God has for you in the name of Jesus Christ. One thing I also want to emphasize, we spoke last Sunday, is what happened to Jacob. In Genesis 32, verse number 26, Jacob holds on to the angel and says, I'm not going to allow you to leave me until you bless me. Until you make a blessing, until you provide me my promise, you give me a blessing. And the angel confesses that you have really fought for your miracle and it will no longer remain in the same name of Jacob from today onwards you'll, you'll be called Israel because now you are entering in another dispensation of your season of seeing the fulfillment of the promise which God gave to your forefather God promised you to your grandfather Abraham that he becomes a father of many nations. He are going to experience it. Let me say to people who have dreams and visions in the church this morning. It's not an easy task to stand and give a witness to a miracle God has, has prepared for you. You need to be a fighter. You need to be a, a resilient person. You need to be a person who persists in fighting until things happens to you. It's not easy, it's not something which comes smoothly, comes automatically, it's not a, a one button pressing miracle happens. This needs a person who persists, who fights, who say, I'm waiting until you fulfill it for me. Did you notice that Jacob, the angel had to dislocate his his bone, his bone for him to see the promise come to, come to pass. Dislocated him. And he was leaping. And he was leaping. He said, though I have pains, though it's painful in my leg, though I feel dislocated, yet I'm not leaving you to go until you make a blessing for me. You are here this morning, you go through pains as you are beginning your business. Continue hold on to your business you are making right now. Nothing comes easily, softly, and comes with no pains. 
Mummies, they know what I'm talking about. It's hard, it's painful to bear a child. It's painful, it's difficult to bear a child. But they continue to believe that when the child comes, I'll forget all about the pains I've been going through. Continue praise on. And let me say something to you. Something, get ready for this. I want to blow up the situation right now. Do you know why people, they hate you? You know why they hate you? They hate you because they think what you have, you don't deserve to have it. They don't believe in the supernatural miracles of God. They don't know that what you would have, what they thought you have got from other places, from your employer, that God can do it without even your employer. God can just provide it for you. We employ people even here in the church. And I'm sitting in the church. I know there are many employers here. There are HRs here in the church. Many of you, you call Mimi, and you are the employer. The future of the people is not in the HR manager. If I'm talking to somebody, say a big amen in the name of the Lord. And see the miraculousness of God. The future of the people. God's people, they are created by God. It's God who determines their future. It's the one who determines their future. So let's learn to, to, to accept that the one who owns them can surpass your plans. That's why one day, let me profess, prophesy for somebody. You may drive a car which is more than what you earn from your employment. God can surpass. Even, even the, the employer will begin to have trouble with you. Because he sees that you're driving nicer vehicle than his vehicle. He begins to scrutinize. Where did he get the money? He does not know there is God who provides. He does not know that God can make miracles of God, can provide, can do supernatural provision for his own people. This morning I want to encourage you. Some of you, you are troubled because people are hating you because they say you did not deserve what you have. You did not deserve to be who you are. The husband you have, people are shocked. They are not expressing to you, but they are shocked that you have married this young man. You are married to this woman. She is not matching you because you are not deserved to have such a kind of a wife. They are messages. He is, she is your spouse today. They are shocked. They are backbiting behind you. Though they laugh at you when they see you, oh, wonderful couple, but inside of them it's burning. Let them be burned by their jealousness because of the miraculousness of God for your life. I pray that you live in the miraculous of God. I pray that you see God surpasses even your plans. What you could be able to comprehend with your own minds. Can somebody say amen in the name of the Lord? So I'm teaching you to be a fighter for your miracle. See, the days of the John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffers violence. The violent people take the miracles by force. Be a fighter. We are building this ministry in the intercessory, intercessory a pillar. We are teaching our people to pray. We are training our people to seek God. We are training our people to be fighters in the spiritual realm. Because everything begins in the spiritual realm, in the realm of the spirit. When it's been released in the realm of the spirit, in the physical, it's all about the manifestations. Manifestation that's in the realm of the, the physical. But it begins from the realm of the spirit. I pray that you be a fighter for your miracle. Fighting for your miracle to come, to happen in your life. Can somebody say amen in the name of the Lord? I told you this law number two about sowing. 
your miracle seed. Miracle seed. So I taught you. I know it's been applied badly and practiced in the wrong motives there in the in the church, a in the church and other my fellow clergy. They practice in a wrong attitude, a bad wrong attitude. I want to teach you that despite the wrong teachings and practices there outside, still this is biblical teaching. That you should build an altar for you to go and tell God that my Father, my God, I need you to intervene in my situation. There are times, believe me, there are times in life, if you come to your 40s, in your 50s, Trust me, there are so many instances that you find yourself who things are beyond your abilities and all your resources. Believe me, when you turn to your 40s and 50s, I believe for my, the older than me in the 60s, even harder, there are moments, things they scare. Where you turn to, where you run, where you run to, the unbelievers, they go to witch doctors. The unbelievers, the pagans, they go to witches to seek some chan, 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 chans and other rituals from the demonic forces for them to see a breakthrough. Where do you go? Complaining alone doesn't help. Crying alone doesn't help. Doing whatever you can do in your own thinking doesn't help. You must build up an altar for God. David did I gave you a scripture. David built an altar. He wasn't a priest. He wasn't a prophet. He was just a king. He was a, just a king building an altar to give an offering for him before he goes to the walls. When the plagues comes, when there is some calamities about to come, he could go and give an offering and pray that this is my seed for the breakthrough I desire to see coming in my life. Learn this morning before you go to do attempting to do anything big, anything which it takes God alone to be accomplished. Learn to sow a seed to God and tell Him that I am depending to you alone. Learn to do so. And with God's intervention, God's help, you'll see a breakthrough. This morning, I want to touch to law number three and law number four. Law number three is about living or walking in faith. Living or walking in faith. Second Corinthians chapter number five, verse number seven. Second Corinthians five, seven. The Bible says that. For we walk by faith, not by sight. For we walk by faith and not by sight. This is what I want you to receive this morning. You know, in all the days when people got saved, they were saying he has joined a faith. Just ending the period. He has joined a faith. Salvation it was being conceived, perceived as, a, as a, a religious of people who walks by faith. The people who trust God, the people who believe in God. And they were saying he is part of the people of faith. He is a person who believes in God. He is walking by faith. Now, it's important for you to begin Learning to live by faith, not by what you see. Because today we see a lot of things. Some are good, others are not good at all. Some of the things we see them, they intimidate and put us down. They make us to feel that we'll never see ourselves successful any longer in our lives. He must go to another higher level, another higher gear of living, not be driven by what you see, but being driven by what the Spirit of the Lord is compelling inside of you. What you feel the Lord speaks. Not what you see. Not what you see. The things we see, 
which advises us, which uplifts our faith is okay. But all the things which are intimidating us, are frightening us, are making us to feel that we'll never fulfill our dreams, we must go higher than them. Soaring like an eagle. Be in the higher attitudes. Higher altitude where everything you see, it is too small. You see, it is too small for it to affect the journey you have. Can you say amen in the name of the Lord? One of the big lessons we get from the ego, the bad ego, is that it's able to soar high, fly very high, but he has a, 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 he has a great vision to see something down, though it's too far, but he has a great vision to see something. If he's hunting for something, the ego can come down. If it's a snake, he come down and catch it and take it away because that's how God has created. And I want you to be egos. You fly high when enemies cannot follow you, but you are able through faith to see clearly what you are hunting for. What you are hunting for. You can be able to see it in a detail that when I fall in that place, I'm going to catch what I'm hunting for. Be a person who can see things, hallelujah, that makes you to go to your next level. And this must be things which you see them by faith. You know, the situation may say it's impossible, but faith says it is all possible. The seasons you go through, the time you pass it through, the things we are experiencing, even, even as I'm preaching to you this morning, you are going in a season, things are too horrible for you. I pray that the Spirit of God amplifies your faith, magnifies your faith, and expands your faith that you can say, now I believe like what Abraham said. Though I am old, but I know the one who promised will make it to come to pass. You believe that it will come to pass. Faith I teach in my church. This is what I always teach. I say faith is like an oxygen to a believer. Faith is like an oxygen to you. You need oxygen. I did biology up to form four. I'm not good in that one. But with my small biology, I know oxygen helps in the... In the when the nutrients are in the body, Professor, you help me, please. The oxygen comes and burns and it produces energies. Am I right? Produces the energies. Well, I'm about to share from four to come. Is biology. It burns the nutrients, the food nutrients. And those food nutrients, they produce energy to you. Produce energy to you. And you need energy for you to capture your miracle. Understand, notice this is important. That miracle are the things which you are about to give up, surrender and say it's impossible. And the people always, they tell you this, forget about this one. The situations, the circumstances, they tell you, forget about this one. This is not for you. There are times even yourself, you begin to accept and say, this is not for me. Let me content, be content because I cannot go further than here. But when you have faith, which is your oxygen comes inside of you and burn. What is the food you eat? The spiritual food. Come on, preach with me. What is the spiritual food you eat? The word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing from the word of God. Now the oxygen comes in the faith in the word of God which is your spiritual food. The combination of the oxygen faith and the food called the word of God produces energy for you. Somebody say amen in the name of the Lord. Amen. You have a spiritual food which is the word of God. The promises of God for you. You have a promise of God for your life. The promise of God for your family. The promise of God for your future. Promises of God for all what God has deposited inside of you. You have. You have hidden it inside of you. You carry it inside of you. And 
Faith comes into an equation. Say amen in the name of the Lord. Begins to burn that nutrient, the word of God. Begin to burn it and begin to change it to be energy inside of you. Begin to be strength inside of you. That's why you never quit. You keep on push. Even if it's too hard, you know one day Jericho will fall down. Why? Because there's energy. There are people who are surprised even to see you this morning in the church service. Because they have an idea of what you are going through. In your marriage, in your family, in your studies, in your workplace, in your business. They know things are really hard for you, tough for you. But they are amazed to see you here this morning. You are combining your energy. You are combining the word of God and the faith. Which is your oxygen. You are taking it through the word of God. And there is the energy for you to be even walking and anticipating a great miracle to happen for you. That's why we never run away. That's why we shock people. People, they are amazed. How can you continue being in salvation? Why we see you going through this situation? Because there are some spiritual uh, Spiritual processes going on of the word and faith, the food and the the food and the, the chemical called the chemical called oxygen, which is of faith. They are going on. There is a process going on, which is protein going down to up to verse number three, verse number But for the sake of time, let's just go quickly to verse number, verse number 20. For your Bible study, you can read the passage from verse number 13. 20 says, he did not weaver or get failed. He is in his 90s. Abraham, he is in his 90s. He did not weaver, get failed or fainted in the promise of God through unbelief. Though he's old, Sarah's womb is dead. She cannot produce a child. But he did not waver in believing God. I pray for a person who is hearing me this morning. Never waver, never doubt on God's promises. Maybe even your closest people, they've told you never get married. May the Lord surprise them. That one day you're walking on the aisle coming to perform a wedding right here. And they think that you'll be, be married to a person who does not have a future. Who does not have anything at all. May the Lord surprise all the people wishing you bad things. By providing you the right things you needed from the Lord. Abraham did not waver, not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in what? Can you make it? Put it on the screen. He was strengthened in what? He received the energy in what? He received the power from what? In faith, he was strengthened. You need to have faith to survive the journey of your vision. You must have faith for you to endure the race to the end. You must have faith for you when things... Abraham is waiting for the promise of God. Not for 10 years, not for, for, for 15 years. He's waiting in the, in the more than 20 years for the promise of God to be fulfilled in his life. But he's not waving from the faith. He is believing that the Lord will make it come. Is that what he finishes by saying? He finished by saying, in faith, giving glory to God. He's not complaining. He's not blaming anyone. But he's glorifying God. In other words, he's praising God. Can somebody say amen in the name of the Lord? How great is my God. He's seeing how great is my God. Though no child... But he has a word, a word we say, faith comes by hearing the word. Now he is now bringing in faith. 
And he is not wavering. He is believing that the Lord will do it. Now strength is coming in his life. I pray that you receive the strength of the Spirit of the Lord as you are waiting for your miracle. Listen. Giving glory to God. When you are going through hard time, sometimes don't show physically to people. The people who hate you, they are enjoying you when they see you have a, a face which shows you are in trouble. Don't give them the delights they don't deserve. Don't make them say, yes, we are born again in the church, but uh, don't trust anyone, everyone in the church. They are the ones who are saying, eh, kitu kimepiga tayari. You know you're going through a fire, but you come with a smile on your face. You know it's hard to praise God for what, because of what you are passing through. Give glory to God. I was in West Africa. Uh, it's my first time to be in West Africa. Those people, they are challenging us when it comes to praising and worshiping God. When I was flying back, I was in the three, three seats, and I was at the window seat. At the aisle, there was a sister, a Nigerian sister. She came in. You know the Nigerian sisters, eh? She spent like 15 minutes facing, putting some faces, decorating herself, making up everything okay. When she finished, she turned to me. Who are you? I said, I'm a pastor. She said, wow, now pray. And I began to pray. She was like, rapasaka, rapasaka in the airplane. No wonder we see them challenging us as far as the faith is concerned. They challenge us. And after we, we finish the prayer, she opened her handbag. She had the money. <laughs> Yay! Those changes I had in my wallet was cha a change. She has dollars, dollars. she had the money of, of, of Liberia, and she was going back to her country, Nigeria. She had the money. Then she... Sisters, say amen. If I have some sisters who love God, say a big amen in the name of the Lord. May the Lord give you money in the name of the Lord. Yeah. One day another pastor, especially Nigerian pastor, when he's flying with a Tanzanian sister, you open up your handbag and you pull some dollars. Sister, say amen in the name of the Lord. I preach you a word of faith. You can live a miraculous life. You can be successful if you are trusting to God alone. Putting your faith to God alone. Say amen in the name of the Lord. Amen. Even men can have wallets full of money. Men say amen. amen. I hold, so I had some dollars. I was having a dollar in my wallet. It wasn't in a big bag, but, but it was in my wallet. Men receive the anointing for dollars in the name of the Lord. Somebody say a big amen in the name of the Lord. Are you receiving something? Am I speaking something to you this morning? Giving glory to God. I'm emphasizing, praising God, giving glory to God. Never allow troubles to drive your life. Because as a human being, in as much as we are speaking miracles, troubles are part of our lives. So don't walk in the church allowing everybody to notice that you're going through tough times. Because there's a curtest kind of prayer. The curtest kind of prayer is there. You know that curtest prayer? But they're not praying for you. After they turn their backs to you, they say, Naeye, Kimemkuta. Do you know that people praying that you fall in troubles? There are people wishing you to fall in troubles. I pray. That you don't give them a delight they don't deserve. Come in the church, make up your face right. 
dress nicely. Can you say amen? amen. Compose yourself properly. Come to the church. The time of praising God. We praise God. If they were looking at you, if you are see for quick, they are amazed to see you are jumping, you are leaping, you are praising God, you are saying, How great is my God! You are giving glory to God because you believe in God who performs the miracles. Let's see what he finishes by saying. He says, he says, giving glory to God and being fully convinced. You must have a conviction inside of you. Abraham was convinced that he who had promised, amen, he who had promised, he was also able to do what? To perform it. That was a nutrient he had, a promise of God. And faith, like an oxy oxygen, comes to burn that nutrient. And strength comes and it was fulfilled in the, God, in, the, in the time of God. I pray for you this morning that God amazes you in the name of the Lord. Amazes you. Makes you to feel that I trust you. In the God who does and fulfill all what he promises for me. In Hebrews eleven six, there's a beautiful scripture that says, But without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is impossible to please God. We live only to please God. You live to please who? God alone. If you are trying, waking hard to please people, we will one day disappoint you. It's hard to please us. It's difficult to please us. Probably it's even impossible to please us. But you can please God by faith. Abraham was counted a friend of God, a righteous of God, just by faith. Because at faith, he became a friend of God. And when you become a friend of God, guess what? Even the environments begin to align itself to the one who is honored by God. Isaac must come to you because you are God pleaser, because you are a friend of God, because you are close to God. Things begin to align themselves. When I go, went there, you all know I live a low profile life. It's until when you come close to me, you can understand and know me well. I live a low pro profile life. When I was in Liberia, many leaders who were there, they were taking me as I present myself to them. Simple. Down to earth. So the vice president came to open the, the, the conference. And uh, coincidentally, when I was preaching to Dr. Luesia, she was in the church that Sunday. She came to meet uh, His Excellency Dr. Lazarus Chakwera because she was on her way going to the airport and uh, Dr. Chakwera wanted to be in the church service and uh, they had to meet at the church. So Dr. Jewel, when I was preaching, she was in the church. We have photographs we took together with Dr. Jewel. So I'm going to Liberia and my host realized that I, I know her and I preached to her. And the, young, the, the guy who came here, you remember, he was like Nigerian, you remember him? Man? He makes a connection. The vice president finishes to officiate the meeting. The assistant to the vice president comes to me and they say to me, we have heard that you have a word for the vice president. We are taking now to speak to the vice president. See what the Lord can do. See what the Lord can do. Say amen. Now, end of last year, the spirit of God spoke to me that prepare yourself to speak to big leaders. The Spirit of God taught me last year. And usually when I'm waking because so many things goes in my spirit and goes in my mind. I have yellow stickers. I write things because they flow quickly and I keep them writing. This one, sometimes I forget, but this one, I wrote it. 
and I put in bracket presidents. And they, come on, give my God glory. It was confirmed in Liberia. When they came to pick me, the assistance of the vice president, they said, we heard you, had a, you have a weight to the vice president. And, you know, I did not prepare. I did not inquire from the Lord a weight. And I did not know that I have that opportunity because he's a great leader. It was easy in, in, in Malawi because I was with the, His Excellency Chakwera. But now he is under his security and all the protocols. It's difficult. Now I had about three, four, five minutes of talking with, the, with her excellence. Now, this is what I want to share to you. Everybody was treating me so lowly before I spoke to her, her excellence. You know what I'm talking about, eh? And they saw she was laughing. I was, I was conveying greetings from my wife. That she, she remembers my wife. My wife who greets you. And it was wonderful when I was preaching with you. Preaching for you in, in Malawi. And he, she thought I was Russian. She, she said, oh, you're the pastor of that great church I came. I said, no, no, no. I was a guest speaker that Sunday. And we are discussing things. I loved it. I loved it. You convey my greeting to His Excellency Chakwera, and I was saying, who am I to take His Excellency's greetings? Now, guess after, it was after the, the photo, shot, uh, photo shoot, after that one, she was now moving. Everyone was looking at me, who is this person? Who is this person? Because of proximity with, his, with Her Excellency. When you have proximity with God, People may think that they don't understand. Come on, stand up. I give my God a big praise right now. Your proximity with God adds values into your life. Your proximity with the high most God adds value to your life. That's why Abraham was called a friend of God, was being counted righteous, and because of that, you see what Israel is experiencing today. Israel is a small piece of land, but it's a blessed land. Israel is a small population, but it's a blessed population. It's leading the entire world. It's affecting, impacting the entire world. Why? Because of proximity of their father and the God who keeps on making miracles for everyone who believes in him. Give the Lord a mighty praise right now. May the Lord do miracles for you. May you experience the miraculousness of God for your life. Let me end there. Don't be people pleaser. Be God pleaser. You become a friend of God because you pleases him. And when you become a friend of God, honor, value will come to your life. Miracles will begin to happen. God will make surprises for your life. Things you never expected will begin to happen to you, to your life. In Hebrews chapter number 4, verse number 2, there's a scripture. I don't, I don't want you to live without reading this scripture. It's an important closing scripture for you. Hebrews 4, 2. 4, 2. Hebrews. For two. He says, For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they had, they had did not do what? Can you read it with me? Did not do what? Did not profit them. Did not benefit out of that word why they didn't benefit out of that word can you read it with me because they did not mix the word with what they didn't mix the word with faith you have to blend together blending your faith 
and the word produces profits to your life. I pray that you live as a believer, a Christian, who lives in the prophet side of your Christian faith. You live in the prophet's, uh, prophet side. And how are you living in the, in the prophet side? It's by blending together rivers of joy. You are blending together the word of God and faith you have in God. It begins to bring prophets in your life. You find a prophet in your household. You find a, prof, a prophet in your business. You find a prophet in your life. You find a prophet. God he multiplies all the prophets around your life. I pray that you blend together these two ingredients may the Lord enable you makes you to live that in the name of the Father the Son and the Spirit of the Lord everyone say Amen Hallelujah give God praise Hallelujah. I know we have English speakers just Forgive me, I fail to see this song. You help me if I have uh, any of my daughter or son, or son who can lead me. I'm a tender lady, I'm a tender lady, I'm a tender lady. Very prophetic song, eh? Inspires. I want to sing that song, I'm serious. If I have any, any one of you, son or daughter, I'm a fine lady, I'm a fine lady, I'm a tender lady. My daughter, God. If I have anyone this morning, you have a testimony. God did you something. I'm a tender leader. If God, I'm a tender leader for you, something this morning. Come on, sing like you mean it right now. Naomi. As you are singing, remember what God has done to your business, to your job, to employment.
Nina, Kushukuru. Listen, 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 listen. Some of us we came in down as high school boys. Today we own plots. We have homes. We have wives. We have husbands. We have children. Isn't God has done something for you? Anyone relates to what I'm talking about? You entered in there with a small bag, but today you have a house. A house is full furnished. Why can't you sing with us this morning? I say, we finally the bona, we me ni pali the bona. Baraka zako zeshabiki, bari na kushukuru mungu wangu. Oh, come on. Even if you don't have a plot, you don't have a house, but at least this morning you have a breath to praise God. Everything with a breath, let it be praise the Lord. If you just have a breath, praise God for a breath you have. Come on, my Messiah. Rakapase na Messiah. Yeka Messiah. You are on schedule. You are on the schedule of God. You are on the schedule of God. I say you are on the schedule of God. I say you are on the schedule of God. Hallelujah. I make two prayers. I make two prayers and it's a simple, quick, short prayer. Number one, when Jesus was teaching his disciples about forgiving, seven times is seven a day. That was a complex teaching he taught. It was a difficult teaching he taught, ever taught his, his disciples. They saw it, it was impossible. And when he saw their doubtness, they, he was imparting the faith in them. And they asked him, that Father, Jesus, Master, increase our faith now because this is impossible with us as human beings. We cannot do it in our own strength. Which means you can pray for faith to be increased in your life. 
Number one area I want to pray for you. Is there anyone this morning who want God to increase your faith? In certain areas you are about to give up. There are certain areas you are about to surrender. To say I'm giving it up. This now I can't go further. Be, it might be business. It might be marriage. It might be family. It might be your job. It might be anything. Your career. You are about to give up. You are at the age of giving up. This morning I want to make a prayer for you. That the Lord raises up and increases faith to you. Anyone this morning would like me to make a ministry to pray for your faith to be elevated, to be lifted up. You come quickly. I make a simple, short, short prayer for you. This is what I feel the Spirit of God leads me to do right now in the name of the Lord. Increase your faith. They told you, Jesus, increase my faith. I'm about to give up. I'm about to run away. I'm about to put down my tools. I'm about to lay tools down. I'm about to surrender. I'm about to take a white flag and tell the devil I'm giving up. I'm running away. I can't go further. You come and just to trust God to increase your faith, to amplify your faith, to raise up your faith, to magnify your faith, to expand your faith. This is the time you begin to pray for yourself. You begin to pray for yourself. You may lay, lay your, hand, your own hands on your chest and pray as I make this short prayer for you. My Father and my God, I pray for these wonderful men and women who have run to the altar. This morning they seek that thought. Their faith grows up. They they, they want to see that the faith grows up, increases in the name of Jesus Christ because of the situation they've been going through, because of the circumstances they're passing through, because of the resistance they're experiencing, because of the opposition they're experiencing. They're about to give up. They're about to run away. They're about to say it is impossible. They're about to surrender. And I pray for them right now. And I'm praying for this man and for this woman before he gives up before he runs away before he puts down the tools I'm praying for him and I'm praying for her and I'm praying for your people right now in the name of Jesus Christ that my father and my God you raise up their faith you increase their faith you expand their faith you magnify their faith in the name of Jesus Christ may their faith be magnified be expanded and be re-erased in the name of Jesus Christ anything which has been putting down their faith which has been making their faith to become like wavering and fainting I cast it away of them I remove it out of them I command it to get out of them my father and my God I am anointing this woman I am anointing this man I am anointing this young woman and I'm anointing this young man with anointing of faith with anointing of faith I anoint you with anointing of faith I anoint you with anointing of faith I am anointing right now with anointing of faith yes 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 Yes. Yes. No giving up. No running away anymore. No one will run away anymore. No putting tools down. No surrender. There is no any surrender in the name of Jesus Christ. Kapasaya. Be sickness, be financial, be family, be marriage. No surrender in the name of Jesus Christ. Your faith is being increased right now. The spirit of the Lord is saying, I am increasing their faith. I am increasing her faith. I am increasing his faith. The spirit of the Lord is increasing your faith right now. I delete every negative word, any disappointing word, anything they say to you just to 
just to put your faith down to show you to show you that you are nothing you cannot attain it you cannot match with it you cannot have it i am deleting all kinds of weights negative weights disappointing weights discouragement weights i am taking out of your mind right now in the name of jesus christ we delete them we remove them out of your mind we are undoing all these weights in the name of jesus christ Manda Messiah. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle right now. Receive your miracle right now in the name of Jesus. Anything we, you inquire of the Lord for you, may it be granted to you. Anything we, you inquire from the Lord pertaining your health, pertaining your marriage and your family, pertaining your business, your career, your employment, pertaining your children, may it be given to you right now because your faith is increased. 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 Say these words after me. Say, Jesus. I have received this morning the anointing of increasingness of my faith. Say, my faith is increased. I will go back to my original dream, my original vision I had in the beginning. And I begin it again with the faith in God and the promise word for my life that will make it to come to pass in the name of jesus any negativity in me i command it to get away of me this morning i'm receiving the anointing of faith for miraculous of god in jesus name Everyone with the faith in these places say a big amen in the name of the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a clap of your hands. Big more. Listen before you leave. Before you leave. Now you've come before the altar for prayer. This is not a cutest prayer. It's not a cutest prayer. It's a serious prayer. It's a serious prayer. We have prayed for you for your faith. Now go and attempt your dreams in the name of the Lord. Attempt your dreams. Attempt your dreams. Go and do what? You even spoke to yourself, it is impossible. You spoke, you said to yourself, it is impossible. Go this time around with a prophetic word. It shall come to pass to you, my son, in the name of the Lord. Go with the prophetic way. Even the things which the closest people you trust, they say it is impossible. Go with the word from the altar of God. This time around, that it is impossible. And it shall come to pass to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go and experience the miraculousness of God. In Jesus' name, and everyone in the house of the Lord, say a big amen. amen. While you're about to leave, everyone who wants to give my second prayer ministry is for everyone who wants to give his life to Jesus Christ. You're not born again. You're not saved. You are backslidden. You have messed up your life somewhere, somehow. As others will be now going to their places. You remain here. And if you are back there, come in front. Come in front. Anyone, you say, I'm a backslidden. I've messed up my life. I'm no longer living a life that pleases God. You walk in front. My daughter, come. My daughter, come. Come, come. Give the Lord a clap of your hands. Give God claps of your hands. Yes, yes. You're backslidden. You've never given your life to the Lord. You've never been born again. Oh, you've messed up your life. Today you want to reconcile. You want to give your life back to the Lord. You run quickly to the altar. And this is my second prayer ministration for you. This is my second prayer ministration for you. Kapasaya. Daughters, follow me in this prayer. Say after me. Say, Jesus. 
I am a sinner. Church, you may support them. Church, you may support them. I am a sinner. I cannot change by myself. I need you to change me in my life. This morning, I'm repenting all my sins. Turning back to my father. As a prodigal child, I'm returning back to my home and to my father. I commit myself to you, Jesus, to be my Lord and my Savior. Goodbye, devil. Goodbye, world. Goodbye, Satan. Today, I'm a child of God. I'm born again. I'm forgiven. I'm a holy person. In Jesus' name. Let's lay hands and pray. Father, thank you because of these wonderful daughters that are giving love to you. I pray that, Father, this morning you cleanse all their iniquities, wiping them away through the blood, with the blood of Jesus Christ, accepting them as your children, writing their names in the book of life, making them to feel forgiven, to feel accepted in the family of God. We commit them into your hands and pray a blessing of God upon their lives. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Spirit of Jesus Christ, we pray. And the entire church say, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a clap of your hands. Daughters, congratulations for giving your life to Jesus. Well done. Daughter, well done. Well done, daughter. Daughter, well done. Now, today onwards, follow Christ. Abide in his way, follow all his precepts, and live in Christ. You, sh you shall see the benefits of following Christ. God bless you with love in Jesus' name. You follow the gentleman here. Amen. God bless you. Give the Lord a clap of the hand.